because of the strong food activities and the third of the five types of creation, suffering, avidya, ignorance. Asumita, false egoism. Uh, then raga, material attachment to nature, aversion. So these are the skutya tanarata, avidya. The Bhaktanath Thakur has said that this body is actually avidya, made of avidya.
all three. Number three is a really interesting absurd material things. Number four is Durvar Vargal, irresistible attachment, Durvar Vargal. And number five is Dresha, aversion. So these are all problems actually. The first obstacles is Asmita, this false ego, huh? is actually um, in the Bhagavatam Thakurses. Maya Sukhe Matta Jeeva Ki Krishna Muli Do Se Se Vitya Bhashe Asmita Janmi Do Maya Sukhe Matta Jeeva Ki Krishna Muli Do Se Se Vitya Bhashe Asmita Janmi Do Intoxinated by Maya's pleasures, the soul forgets Lord Krishna. In the grief of ignorance, he finds material false ego, death, death, and relief. This is called Asmita coming from forgetfulness of Krishna. Asmita hite hailo maya, the arpini vesha, ta hite jada gata raga dhvesha. From false ego, so from this Asmita comes a rapt meditation on maya. And this is called avidi vesha. And from that comes material attraction and aversion. So they're all interconnected. Understand? From a smita, uh, then a vinivesh comes. From that comes rasa. So actually, uh, Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasanurve Sindhu has actually told these things. Obstacles arising from impasse thinking, anarthanivritti. And wrong doings as well as fivefold miseries. Avidya means to mistake a changeable and transitory object for an eternal entity. Avidya. The of this material world. We think that it is an eternal entity. And uh, mis to misidentify one's own self with one's gross physical body and one's subtle body, fine intelligence, and what is called asmita. Asmita means actually we are neither cross body, we are not subtle body made of mind, intelligence, and force. But that is actually we are identifying with that. And that is actually what Kirsan or Sindhu Bhakti not Thakur, this Rupa Goswami Pass says that actually that is the problem. Misidentification uh, of one's own self with one's gross physical body and one's subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego. Then there is some raga. Raga is actually mutter attachment. Understand? So raga, raga is coming to objects or sense experiences. Is that, for example, form, uh, rupa, taste, rasa, smell, ganda, touch, sparsha, and sound. Shakta. So standing to fire, water, earth, air, and earth. So we are attached to a sense experience, uh -huh. which is we want to see beautiful form, we want to test very delicious taste, rasa. we want to smell some nice nice fragrance or for raga. Then actually dvesha. Dvesha is aversion or hatred. Dvesha, anger against opposition to the enjoyment of the senses. If any opposition comes to the enjoyment of the senses, then Dvesha comes. <coughs> then Avinivesh, material absorption. Avinivesh is to misconceive one as dead when the physical body and the phenomenal objects of physical enjoyment are satisfied. It's actually a misconception that actually when we are die, when we die, uh, we think I am dead. When the body is gone, all these uh, phenomenal objects of physical enjoyments are destroyed, we think we are dead. This is called abhinimish. So these are all actually um, obstacles. Uh, so we have to. Uh, In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is repeatedly about this Raga Dvesha, apathy and sympathy. Is telling us that uh, Lord Krishna has hammered the uh, apathy. Uh, so apathy, um, 
एंड सिंपथी अपति एंड सिंपथी राग द्वेश so these two are our enemies bhagavad gita 2.64 you'll see that um krishna is telling that you should give up uh, uh raga dvesha raga and dvesha apati and sympathy we should try to um so krishna is text verse is raga dvesha text to vishaya indriya charan आत्मवशे आत्मा प्रसाद अधिगछति राग द्वेश विधेयात्मांट्रोल सेवर विमुक्त फ्री फ्रॉम राग adhikachati attains prasadam joyfulness chan even while enjoying vishayan sense objects indriya senses atma vishay which are under his control a man of controlled senses however who is free from attachment and aversion attains happiness of mind even while enjoying various objects this so here Arjun previously asked, "How does one who is still practicing it? It is also a question that Bhagwan speaks in the beginning of the Rag. Since the mind cannot directly accept sense objects, there is no fault in accepting sense objects with controlled senses. With the Atma means one whose Atma mind is fit in the instructions of Bhagwan. Prasadam Atikachchit implies that there is no fault if such qualified person accepts sense objects." Rather, it is specifically to their credit because they see that everything is related to Bhagwan. One who is still the pregnant may or may not give up sense objects, may or may not be motivated to attend them. In any case, everything is auspicious for him. So here, even when the external senses are controlled by keeping them aloof from the sense objects, the mind does not stop thinking about them. Such a renunciation is not for a fool or Just listen to Mark Twain again. Monkey in the house. Stated in Gita 3.6, Kavindriyani sa yamne yas ke mas. When a sadhaka practices appropriate renunciation, yukta vairagya, and worships Sri Bhagwan, he can control his mind, absorbed in thinking of his worshipful deity. When he has reached that stage, there is no fault in accepting those subjects which are favorable to those which are unfavorable. Understand? So here Krishna is telling us, accept that subject necessary, but don't be attached to it. So Raj, Dvesha, this is how he is telling. So these are all they have already been described in the second shower. Uh, now we are in the third shower. In essence. Because divine entities were amongst the service of Krishna since a time without beginning, but this ill motives, they are bound by ignorance of India. As a result, they develop the false egoism that the body is I and anything related to the body is mine. Thus, they develop attachment, raga, to their material objects of sense gratification and affection for them, and they feel deep aversion to the threefold miseries. So here. Three four miseries uh, I've been explained. Number one is suffering inflicted by one's own mind and body, known as adhyatmika. This adhyatmika creation, suffering inflicted by one's own body and mind, is the adhyatmika creations. Uh, we see sometimes that our own mind is the key factor. So. Um, Number two is suffering inflicted by others, known as adhikokyakrishas. Other living entities also give us suffering. Number three is suffering inflicted by the demigods or material nature, generally in the form of drought, floods, famine, and so on, known as adhikokyakrishas. Now this is a very very common. You see that South Africa there was flooding, in Assam there was flooding. In my own town, when I was brought up, Kolar, there was a Kolar river. 
also not so much experienced, but uh, yes, and sometimes doubt and continuous for two, three years, no rain was there in Maharashtra. People were sorry. Uh, I was in Maharashtra with a temp water shortage. And so they're all uh, categorized as activity creations. So, um, but Krishna has given Bhagavad Gita 7 chapter 56 verses. That means, Dukkheshu anabhijjana mana, Sukheshu vigatas puha, Vidaraga bhaya krodha, Sita nirmuni rucha ven. Anudhijjana mana, one who's mind irritated. Dukkheshu in the presence of threefold miseries. When the threefold miseries come, the mind should be agitated, not agitated. Vigatas Pura and remains free from anchorings. So Keshu in the presence of sense pleasures. One is Tita, free from raga, attachment, bhaya, fear, krodha, and anger. Which is called Muni, a saint, Tita, of fixed intelligence. One is not disturbed by the three types of miseries, a dharmic, a devotee, a revealing relations, who remains free from desires in the presence of happiness and is free from attachment. Fear and anger is called a steady minded sage. So, here, how does one who is Tita Pragya speak? To answer this question, Shri Bhagavan speaks the present shloka beginning with Dukkeshu. And also in the next shloka, Dukkeshu means the threefold miseries a deathmic, a devotee, and arrivalic. Hunger, thirst, fever, headache, and so on, coming from one's own body and mind are a deathmic miseries. A deathmic miseries. Understand? Adivotic miseries are those caused by other living entities, such as a snake, tiger. Miseries such as excessive rain or natural disasters, or for the day or for the refers to a person who, when faced by such miseries, thinks, I attend these miseries due to my past, uh, past actions, suffer them. Knowing this, he even deliberates upon. This within himself and understanding this misery to be due to his prarata karma or his speaks openly and without duplicity when questioned by others. In any case, it just shows no attention, even in the presence of these miseries. This absence of disturbance is evident to those who are expert in reading such symptoms. However, it appears an, an invitation of immediate or artificially manifest symptoms of tolerance. Those who are expert or accepted, similarly, those who remain free from desires when a health situation appears, knowing it to be prarabdha bhoga, even resulting from past actions, either contemplate this within themselves or enlighten others. This response is also understood by the learned men. So, here actually, you see that um, we have to tolerate these all these things. Vita Raga. There are in uh, Vita Ranga means those who remain detached from happiness. Vita Bhaya, those who remain free from the fear that entitles such as tigers may eat them. Vita Kurata, they do not feel anger even towards a person who comes to attack or kill them. For example, no fear or anger arose in Janabharat when the Dakwite king Shala told, uh, took him to the deity of Devi Kanti as a human sacrifice. Bharat Maharaj. We can see in the, uh, a person whose heart is not disturbed by the three four miseries, who is devoid of the desire to attain happiness and who does not become elated when happiness comes to him is called Tikvak. No Prahushita Priyam Prabhya, no Vijayat Prabhya Chapriyam, Stira Buddhi Asam Moro Brahmavit. Brahmani is Tita. A person who does not become elated when attaining that which is favorable or deep is called Sthita Prakya. The example of this is the life history of Bharat Mahamaj and this is the life of Bharat Mahamaj. Bharat Mahamaj was the last part of his life. He became attached to an infant deer and due to the state of his mind he left his body. He took birth as a deer. However, because he remained 
from his previous birth remained separate from the association of family and friends and spent his time in the hermitages of the sages hearing topics of Sri Bhagwan. As a result of his worship of Bhagwan in his previous life, he took the next birth in the house of a religious devoted Brahman. Internally, he always remembered Sri Bhagwan, but externally, he kept himself completely aloof by pretending to be a dullard, even though his father tried to make him learn. Jadavar tolerated ill treatment and taunts by his stepfather, stepmother, stepbrothers, and relatives were remaining ecstatically absorbed in the worship of Bhagwan. Once Vrishala Raj, the king of thieves, desired a son, and he wanted to offer his Ishta Devi, worshipful, worshipable goddess, Bharat Bhadrakali, a human being who was free from wicked thoughts. He had previously captured a suitable person for sacrifice, but somehow the man had escaped. When the white king was wandering in search of another suitable person to sacrifice, he saw the Mahabhagavan Jalavaram protecting his family and spirits. The king became happy when he saw that Jalavaram was dressed with a body appropriate for the sacrifice. According to the rules for sacrificing a human, he fed Jalavaram nicely, decorated him with turmeric powder, garments, and Chandana and eventually presented him in front of Kali. Devi as an offering. Even after seeing, hearing, and being aware of all this, rather he, rather it was Stephen Jadabhar said, Kali Devi, uh, he herself appeared in a ferocious form, making a loud noise. She snatched the sword from the hand of King Shala and beheaded him. And in other words, after drinking the blood, she danced and played with their heads as if they were balls. With great affection, he sent the Mahabharat Jadavarat on his, on, his, on his way. This deity of Badraga is still present in Kurukshetra. But the only history of Jadavarat is shown in Bhagavad Swami says to Prakshit Maharaj, Bhagavan Shri Vishnu carries the present is. Death personified. Is death to death personified. He is always anxious to look after the Bhaktas. O Vishnu he completely protects such Param Bhagavat, Param Hansas, who have become free from falsely identifying the body as the self, who have performed the very difficult task of serving the severing part of mundane attachment, whose thoughts are anxiously absorbed in thoughts of being welfare to all living entities. And who neither harm others nor feel empty towards them. Such Paramahansas who accept the shadow of Sri Bhagavan's fearless lot of feet are never disappointed, even at the time of their own execution. There is nothing surprising about this. And see that here, I class the Pragya Maharaj. So, anyways, mm -hmm. um, so here, mm -hmm. The consequences of such attachment to the body and body relationships and intense absorption of innovation in them is that deep impressions are made in the living entities. Heart is obstructed on ability to perform shraman and kitan at the time of devotional practice and are therefore called dushkruti jal anarthas, dushkruti uttra anarthas. So, anyway, we have to be very careful. Abhinivesh hmm. means. Vidya Vidyavesh, Vidya Vidyavesh. Huh? So, Nirguna Bhakti is unlimited Lakshita Shunya, the word of duality of the material world which arises from Vidya Vidyavesh, forgetfulness of Krishna, anything. And he observes the performance of everybody in continuous service to me, Purushottama. To forget Krishna and become absorbed in Maya is called Vidya Vidyavesh, absorption in the Second of false objects, in the Bhagavata 11.2.37. This was arrives various separate interests such as I, mind, you, and yours. So this is called Abhinivesh. Uh, we should have Abhinivesh, not Satan Abhinivesh. We should have not in our Satan Bhajan, uh, not in the body, in the relatives, and friends, and family. Uh. So, um, and we should not have all this good Abhinivesh. Dura Vinivesh means attachment for a particular activities. There is also a problem, a 
if you attach to central activities, then that type of attenuation uh, actually has to be given up. Attenuation means material absorption or absorption is something that is not really there. Uh, understand. So, um, this uh, Adinivesh um, is uh, forbidden and Vayam uh, Dhyaya Adinivesh. Isha Tapitasya Viparya Smriti Tan Mahatato Udhavatitam Pante Kesham Uradevat Atma. So, in um, so, Abhinivesh and to be attached to the trivial uh, objects, uh, this is actually forbidden in um, this. So, now <clears throat> Sukurkir Tandavas are this in the temporary heavenly planets and so forth. And they are the results of performing pious orders, selfishly motivated actions, self-carpals, in past lives. These desires are the obstacles known as Sukhurti Uttanarata. Desire for material enjoyment arising in the heart of the sadhaka at the time of devotional practice are the result of impressions created by past past activities. Now are called Sukhurti Jat Anarthas. Sukhurti Uttanarata. So Sukhurti Uttanarata and then Sukhurti so sometimes we have committed some punya actually, uh, and then that also causes uh, problems. Huh? So we have to be very careful. Mm. But real sukruti is actually is sadhu sangha. Sadhu sangha will bestow that sukruti. Uh, so actually, our good fortune is you know, countless and countless of fruit of sukti accumulated in birth after birth, and on the awakening of this bounty, one develops an affection for sadhu sangha. Now, material sukti or material pious activities will lead you to the heaven. But um, like Sangam Amritin Tulsi, fasting on Ekadeshi, visiting the holy Dhamma Brindavan, hearing Harikatha, this type of sukti. Which accumulated over birth and birth, this will cause an affection for Sadhu Sangha. Understand? Sukurti, Bhakti Unmukh Sukurti, that is, uh, Sukurti is very important, uh, but Bhakti Unmukh Sukurti. <clears throat> Desire for material enjoyment arising in the heart of the Sadhu at the time of devotional practice are the result of impressions created by. Past pious activities and are called Sukruti Jatanartha, Sukruti Uttanartha. The desire for liberation is also Sukruti Jatanartha. It is never possible to test bhajan rasa as long as the heart yields for either material enjoyment or liberation. It is thus said, Bhukti Mukti Skruha Javar Vishachi Rudivar Tati Tavar Bhakti Sukha Syantra Katam abhyodayo bhavet. So, Bhakti Rasamrati Sindhu 1.2.21. Bhakti Mukti Skurhaya, Bhakti Shachirati Kutati. As long as the two wishes of the desire for material enjoyment and for liberation from material bondage remain in the heart, how can the talent of bliss of pure devotion possibly arise? Bhakti Mukti Skurhaya. So this desire for liberation and desire for sense gratification, you have to forsake them. Especially huh? Bhakti Pramukhpuri Goswami Maharaj in the art of Sadhana chapter is referring. Chaitanya Chaitam is also the same performs in Bhakti Lila, 19th chapter of 76. Exploitation and renunciation. So Bhakti Rakshad Siddhar Maharaj is uh, the follow the angels, he says the real spirit. Exploitation and renunciation, Bhakti Mukti Skura, these two are great enemies of devotion. 
the tendency to exploit and the tendency to renounce. When one has eaten too much, as a result, one wants to abstain from eating. Liberation moksha is only a reaction to exploitation. It may appear that we are in the quest, quest for duty, money, sense, pleasure, and liberation, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. But this is an external and partial examination of our experience. With a deeper assessment, we will find that we are eagerly searching only for rasam. So the, the fullest satisfaction, the perfect beauty. Is not the goal. Mere liberation from the negative is artificial. Life must have its fulfillment. Everything has its fulfillment and necessary position. Life is not meant for nothing and zero cannot be the sum total of our existence. The conclusion is infinite and not zero. Mere liberation to remain in a long deep slumber is destructive and incomplete. It cannot be the object of creation or the object of our existence. The other side must be researched, the chitvilas, the transcendental dynamic plane. And where can we get that? Here in this world is exploitation. And there is just the opposite dedication. Both exploitation and renunciation must be eliminated, and we should live in the third plane of dedication. The third plane is the life of dedication, a life of duty, not to any part, but to the whole. I live of the whole, and that the whole, that whole is a part of God Krishna. This is what it means to be a lover of the beautiful. In that way, we have to understand and march onward. And that is full in itself, perfect. Neither of these two, the negative and the renunciation of the negative, can bring real positive gain. The positive is not a mere withdrawal from the negative experience. We must come in contact with the positive Satchidananda, Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. We must commit ourselves in all phases, whatever is possible for us. So here, as long as these two wishes of the desire for material enjoyment and for liberation from mundane bondage in the heart, how can the transcendental bliss of pure devotion possibly arise? <clears throat> now, for this reason, Patanjali and other prominent great sages have included the category of Sukuti Chatanartha within the previously mentioned fighters of miseries, greatest such as Avidya and Asumita. Aparadottanarthas are obstacles arising from offenses. Anarthas are for the most part the greatest impediment in the performance of bhajan. So actually here now, Aparad. So we have to be very very careful of Aparad. Jagannath Pandit is done in Prima Vivarata. Asadu Sangete Bhai Nama Nahimaha. Nama Akshara Bhai Raya Bhate Nama Kabunaya. Kabunama Vasa Sada Haya Nama Parada. Eksa Bhajani Me Bhai Krishna Tirbada. Jati Kari Me Krishna Nama Sadu Sangkara. Bukti Mukti Siddhi Vanchat Vipar Oh brother, we cannot chant holy name in the association of non-devotees. The sounds of the holy name may come out of your mouth, but it will not really be the name. It will be, it will sometimes be the name of reflection, names reflection, Namavas, and sometimes often the chanting Namavas. But brother, we should know that in either case, this kind of chanting, Interferes with the attainment of pure devotion to Krishna. If you want to chant the holy names, then associate with the devotees and keep desires for sense enjoyment, liberation, and yogic powers at a distance. <laughs> Krishna 
कृष्ण भक्ति मनु को सब करा स्वीकार कृष्ण भक्ति प्रति कूल सब कर परिहार ज्ञान जोग चेष्टा छर कर्म संग मर्गट वैराग्य त्याज जाति देह रंग कृष्ण आमारे पाले राखे जन सर्व काल आत्म निवेदन साधु पाया कष्ट बड़ा चिवेर चिया साधु भक्त रूपे कृष्ण आई लीय गुरा पद आश्रय कर बुद्धिमान गुरा पाई साधु गुरु अच्छे के वान गिव अपन ऑफेंस इज टू दोली नेम एज वेल एज वरिंग अबाउट रिसीविंग रिस्पेक्ट और क्रिटिसिजम consume what you need without attachment and always in the holy name accept everything which ever special to krishna and reject everything which interferes with its practice abandon any of liberation and mystic power as well as devotion mixed with karma above all give up the false renunciation of the one kind of bodily process is an attachment self renunciation Remain strong in the knowledge that Krishna is always taking care of you. Offer yourself to Krishna completely, and humility become free from all attachments. It is very difficult for an ordinary person, the association of genuine sinful persons. Krishna himself knows this, and so he kindly came to Nadia in the form of a saintly devotee. An intelligent person takes shelter of Mahaprabhu's. Lord is fit for such a person knows that other than mahaprabhu there is no true saint or spiritual master so here if you want to be not from mahaprabhu then you have to associate with sadhus understand so is a thunder to the danger it is for this reason that shila krishna ji thakur has elaborated on them From a general perspective, offense and sin appear to be synonymous, but devotional scriptures clarify that there is a huge difference between them. Merely a semblance, a pass or bhajan, vanquishes a host of sins, just as a fire completely destroys a massive stack of cotton. But an offense is not so easily vanquished. It is only by acknowledging one's offense and bitterly lamenting for it that atonement is possible. Actually, Namahas, Namahas. Namahas. So, the Kavi Dharma Guru Dwara Devi Ho. Dasham Dattman Thanaam Ami Bhakti Pranayini. Yes, Tattva Chanti Bhagavan Nama Tarani Patinte Nirvatu Kaha Mai Mana Bhagavati. The Namahas will destroy all the sins. Uh, uh, Namavas is very powerful. It will destroy all your sins. No doubt of it. For example, Shri Bhakti Ram Puri Maharaj tells us that uh, the Padma Puran states that to be exonerated of one's sins, the purifying power of Holy Name is far more potent than all the methods of penance is recommended in the scriptures. So, if you want to get rid of your sins, you take at the Holy Name. The purifying power of the Holy Name is far superior, far more potent than other atonements, other methods of penances. However, not even the Holy Name can protect one who offends or blasphemes a devotee of the Lord. Even the Holy Name cannot protect a blasphemer or an offender. Understand? Um, if if you blaspheme a devotee of the Lord or if you offend a devotee of the Lord, then even the Holy Name cannot protect you. When Vishnu Aparan is committed. The offender cannot benefit from nama bhas or from kirtana until he is absolved of his offences. The nama bhas or shuddhana also um, cannot protect an Vaishnava offender. One is offended a Vaishnava, so we have to be very careful. Um, nama bhas is very uh, powerful, no doubt about it. There is no doubt that nama bhas can burn all the sins. Uh, Sins of 
a person who chants namas are destroyed. And he goes beyond birth and death, as we see from the examples of Ajahnvika Rathas. Apart from this, Shastra opposes the performance of Preta Shraddha. Now actually, a question may come. That actually, some Shraddha Paksha was there, right? People were doing Shraddha. Like when the Shri Saraswati Prabhupada uh, left the world, understand. So some of Shri Prabhupada disciples wanted to perform his Shraddha Samskar, according to the smart tradition. Wanted to do his Shraddha. But again, Kutil Prabhupada means Shibra Piyari Brahmachari, Piyati Shavashai Maharaj. He went to pose this proposal. According to the smart doctrine, he said, Everyone becomes a ghost, Preta, when they die. It is to deliver people from this ghostly condition that one has to perform their Preta Shraddha. However, according to Krishna doctrine, the sins of a person who chants Namavas are destroyed. Even Namavas, Sankit Tempari Hasyam Vas Boba Mishra Boba, Uhikurut Arama Karana Vashi Shagam, jokingly also chanting, all the sins are destroyed. Understand? And he goes beyond birth and death. So we see from the examples of Ajamil, uh, Ajamil and others. Apart from that, Shastra opposes the performance of Preta Shraddha to Vaishnavas, who have been devoted to Ekantiki, single focused Krishna Bhakti, and who have chanted Shuddha Nam for their whole life. So, what is the need of committing Preta Shraddha for Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta and Prabhupada? Ram Bihari Brahmachari opposed that. So, the Prabhupada, the count of the souls, is a Nitya Siddha Parikara for Krishna. Eternal Lord. Not only that, he is Krishna Priya, Shiva Shivana, he is Shiva Shiva, he is most beautiful. Who will have a perfect Shanta? There is a fundamental difference between the Sattva, the Shanta, the Vaishnava, and the Shanta, the Smarta. According to Sri Bhakti Vilas, Satkriya Sarati Pihena, the Vaishnava, the only Sattva, the Shanta, the Vaishnava, is the offer of Bhagavad. That is the question of Shanta. Observant of Viraha Mouth Sarvashna. Who is the proper for the sweet? See, you know, none of us destroys all the sins, no need of any other Shanta for Vaishnava. So you see that here, um, uh, the power of Namahas actually, power of Namahas. <clears throat> Once uh, Shri Gurudeva has got brother by the name Anang Mohan, he left this world. So Gurudeva says, when I was there, I never saw his face disturbed. He was have afflicted by tuberculosis, very dangerous disease, and uh, he was vomiting blood and all. He was very serious. Still, Gurudev never saw his face disturbed. During the whole period of his stay in the hospital, when Gurudev took him to Tamaram Hospital near Chennai, Param Gurudev uh, wanted to go with him, but Gurudev said, No, Param Gurudev, you don't go, I will go. He happily chanted the names of Gwana, or he listened loving to Srimad Bhagavatam and Shri Chitra but he read to him regularly. All the doctors, young and old, were very attracted to his gentle behavior. On the day of his passing, he suddenly said, uh, Sharan Mantra Machari was about to leave the world, he's calling out, Shri Radha Krishna calling me to Vrindavan, Jai Shri Radha, Jai Shri Krishna, Jai Gaurat Chandra, Jai Nityananda Prabhu, Jai Gurudev. With folded hands, I requested him, Prabhu, please bestow your mercy upon me and in Vrindavan call me also. Upon uh, learning that Sharan Mohan was to be part, I then started to examine him. He hinted, to us with a gesture that the woman should be removed from the assembly. The woman should not be there, he said. He took his last breath saying, oh, Krishna, all the doctors and visitors were struck with water. I mentioned on this incident very seriously. I mean, we became free from the springs of birth and, and attained Vaikuntha simply by the performance of Namavas. When he uttered the name Narayan to his son, what then can be said of someone who has still faith in his guru and who is always 
been chanting the name of Prima Maharaja with Samandhya. In his last moment, he was in such good consciousness, chanting, Hey Radhe, Hey Krishna, and telling us Radha and Krishna call me to Vrindavan. What will be the destiny of such a high class Guru Seva? Surely, we were never able to imagine the glory of this Bhakta here. His life is blessed. His Guru Seva is coming. And true that this was possible only by the and not by any special Adam Bhajan. My faith in our worshipful Sri Guru was intensified. When I returned from Tamaram, I devoted myself to his Seva very faithfully. So actually, Guru Seva. Chari, small child, you know, he left the world, but he was chanting in the name of Radha Krishna by the power of Guru. So here, here you see that Abraham, you have to be very careful. We should be very careful of uh, not offending any Vaishnava or Gurudev. Um, so, since none of us can just as a far competitive stack of cotton, uh, understand. This is not so easily language. It is only by opposing one's offense and determining the one thing for it that I don't think is possible. A sinful person can easily achieve perfection on the strength of his version. But it is never possible for an offensive person to attain perfection. Uh, one may be very sinful, Mahar, let him chant the holy name, even Navaras. Uh, um, all the sins will be burned to ashes. Uh, so there are many, many actually in scripture you'll find uh, so many evidences of this, Navaras, destroying the sins. Uh, um Ek Hari Nam continuously. You are always pure. Bhagwan Shri Narasimha they will protect you. You should always remember that the Vaishnava and kids of Bhagwan are always forever pure. Impurity never touches them, even during birth and death. So Vaishnavas are always pure actually. And what to speak of Vaishnavas? Anyone who takes shelter of Harinam is relieved of the reactions of all past, present and future sinful activities. Even if they have murdered their parents, huh? if someone has even murdered the parents, if you take shelter of Harinam, you are free from that sin. Committed adultery or perpetrated the most grievous sins. It is quite clear Krishna Bhagavatam that when the greatly sinful Ajami called out the name Narayan at the time of death, he was calling his son. Therefore, this was Naravas, not Shantana. Even so, Ajami's reactions were all dispersed by the influence of this Naravas. His death retreated, and afterwards, when he took Harinam in the association of Sadhus, he attended his destination of Ekund. It is the power of the Naravas. So, Srila Gurudev also told her. Sankirtam Parihasama, Sobham Hail Navarro, Ekutitana Gurana Vashishadra Gita. She was Bhagavata 6.2.14. One may utter Sri Krishna Brahm to indicate something else that is given. Jokingly, Parihas, antagonistic, Sobham, or even disrespectfully, Hela. And then people know that these four types of shadow Navarras destroy unlimited sins. Huh? Is the power of the way You should know that there is always the rain. You should know that there are so many kinds of things. Not all types of Namavas, say, Chaya Namavas or Sakas of the pure land, obscured by the sun covered by clouds, which does not manifest its full brilliance. And Pratimba Namavas, the same. All sins will not go away by Pratimba Namavas. A Mayavari may chant like this. But they will go as So, Mayavali chanting the holy name, Pratipipa Navaras, that will not destroy us. But if you can chant Navaras, segments of the period of time, except by ignorance and another, like the sun, the world of clouds, which does not manifest its full brilliance. Like, sun is very brilliant, but it's covered by clouds, oh, then it, cannot, it doesn't manifest the full brilliance. 
So our uh, um, ignorance and anarthas cover the son of the Holy Name. That is not our uh, So you'll see that um, Mahamabas is very powerful. Actually, um, Gurudev is also telling. Um, so Maharaj was asking Gurudev, uh, you should know that there are so many kinds of Mahabharas. So here again he has told. When Shri Swami Maharaj came and the hippies were chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, they were not Mayavadis. But they were ignorant and innocent. Can this type of chanting be said to be China or us? The Guru is telling yes. Hippies, what they were chanting were China. My Shri Ashram are asking, will all sinful activities go away by the chanting? The Guru is telling yes. But when will they go? At once or gradually, when the robe is burnt by fire, its form still is its form is still there. Calling his son whose name was Man Adhyama repeatedly chanted Narayan. Oh Narayan come, oh Narayan come, oh Narayan come. He did this up until the last day of his life, and his simple reactions were like what true. So Vishnajari Thakur explained that his first Narayan was enough to burn his past sins. But he repeatedly did so and therefore his chanting was like a sadhan. Although he was not aware of the results of such chanting, all his offenses, sins, prarabdha reactions uh, that have already fructified, the reactions not yet fructified, good reactions, lying, permanent, and with the ignorance, the cause of sin, were gone. Shiva Ashram Maharaj, with the first Namavas, and Shiva is telling, with the first or by gradually doing, so all his sins, Aradha, Pranatha, Kunta were born. He never realized until he saw his death had been stopped. Because at that time he heard the dialogue of the Vishnudas and the Yamudutas. Hearing very minutely from them the glories of the chanting of the Holy Name, he thought, oh, they have glorified Narayan and his Kirtan. They are my gurus. He wanted to touch their feet, but they disappeared before he could do so. At that time, he realized, I have chanted, and the fruit is that my death has been stopped. I should now chant the, the pure mantra. He then went to Hitler and practiced, I don't know, for how many months or years. At the time, it was September, so it may have been thousands and thousands of years. In the course of time, he developed love for Param Pyoma by Kunta Narayan, and he was totally purified. The Vishnu Thugs came again at that time. They checked to see if something was still lacking, but they saw that his work towards full purification had now completed and they took him back with them to this is the power of the Holy Name. We see that Vishnu Tad also came to Dhruva at the time of death. He said to them, where is my mother? He had some attachment and that is why he was stopped from going to Vaikut. And instead he went to Dhruva Loka. This is Vishnu Loka uh, here in this universe. He was not liberated by Ajahnvi. Ajamal went to Vaikuntha and Dhruva was stopped in this universe and went to Kriloka, also called Ramatya Vaikuntha. Don't doubt this. Madhura Madhura Medan Mangalam Mangalanam Sakala Nigavavalli Sakpalam Swarupam Sukurta Vibariki Shrattaya Helayava Bhagavadar Patram Nita Krishnanama Krishna is the sweetest of sweet and the most auspicious of all that is auspicious. It is the flourishing creeper, eternal the ripened fruit of the Bhagavad, and the embodiment of knowledge, the O best of the Brahma dynasty. Even if someone chants the holy name one or the ones with faith or indifference, he is immediately delivered from this ocean of birth and death. Even one name is enough. If one chants with Sarda, honor and faith, and even if one chants Helaya without it, in other words, if he chants Namabas, even that Namabas will cross all simple reactions. So, good day you are talking about the people who were ignorantly or innocently chanting Hare Krishna. Whenever Prabhupada came to America and then how you started talking about the burnt home, you didn't finish. What is their situation? 
इसलिए गुरुदेव इस तरह की भागवतम फर्स्ट चैप्टर सेकंड श्लोक है जिसका धर्म पृथ्वी लोक परमो निमत्सराम सताम विद्यम वस्तु अत्र वस्तु शिवरम तापत्र मूलनम श्रीमद् भागवते महामुनि कृते किंबा परम ईश्वर सद्यो हृदय वर्धते अत्र कृते सुश्रु विदक्षण completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated this bhagavat quran propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in the heart the highest truth is reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all this truth approves the twofold miseries this beautiful bhagavat compiled by the great sage vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for god realization what is the need for intellect As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Atma by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. In Bhagavatam one point one point two, Sadhu Dya Varadhati Atma Kutevi Shudhu Vita Chhanaat. What is the meaning of that Chhanaat? What is the meaning immediately? So the Guru Dev is telling immediately. What is the meaning here? One may be full of anarthas, but he now begins to hear the Hari Katha. So in Bhagavatam, others are hearing, witness, and Shraddha. But we are not in Guru Gurudeva. Why not? The word the Shana is therefore used properly here. You have been in this world for unlimited time, and if you are now on the path of perfection, if you are now on the way, this is the Shana. In comparison to unlimited time, if in a year or two years or two births one becomes purified, that is the Shana. Try to reconcile this. Shri Guru Dev is telling, and Bhagavan Guru Prabhu is telling. The example is also given that when you take out the plug of a fan, it's still running, but it will stop. Very soon, Shri Guru Dev is telling. Yes, if you will, if you will stop pedaling on a cycle, it will continue to move for a short time. The driver of a train steps on the brakes, and the train continues to go on for two miles, three miles, or four miles. So it has stopped. Thus. Is no harm in saying our tachshat. So actually, you see, it is the power. Um, so Radha Das is asking, my many hippies were chanting Namaz, and some were not chanting Namaz. I want to. The Yamadupta. So Guru is telling, don't doubt. This is your land. Don't doubt. The Yamadupta had never seen this before. Adav Das has seen. Yamadupta had never seen this before. So Guru is telling, the Yamadupta can do wrong, but not the Vishnu Das. Yamadupta came to take Ajamil. They had never heard of this situation before. So Naravas must be very near. So Guru is telling, no, it is not near. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu came for this. Those who do not commit an offence to Vaishnavas, the first of the ten of the Nagas, will do Namavas. Somehow they are on the way. Very soon, in some way, they will become pure. Don't doubt this. What has been written in Shastra is correct. So Gurudev, Madhav Das is asking, Namavas cannot destroy Abhras. So Gurudev is saying, yes, actually, if one does Namavas continuously, it will not commit Abhras. If you fall down on the earth, you can stand up by taking shelter of the same earth. Similarly, if you have done anything wrong or committed any offence, if you chant again with repentance, so Sri Guru is telling that come with strong full belief, don't have any doubt, always respect. So this actually a good discussion about Nama Pras. So don't jump it off. This is the word word, and always chant even Nama Pras no harm. But criticize Vaishnavas. Don't give it offense to Guru Vaishnavas. So here, hmm, to harm others under any entity, to steal, to waste precious with others' wife, to engage in useless gossip and argument, to use harsh language, to behave in a fiendish manner, to perform improper acts, to give distress to another, to criticize others, to drink alcohol, to drink liquor, to Eat meat, eggs, and other forbidden foodstuffs. I have been in the Sudhishasa Bhagavat Sim. 
So we should not uh, drink this liquor, uh, no meditating vocabulary, no intoxication, no exercise. Uh. So you see that um, Krishna actually, uh, Krishna's name is actually very powerful. So, so many hippies are doing all this nonsense, but they slowly became purified by the power of the Holy Name and Mahaprasad. Um, so, Krishna's frame is completely pure. It is completely transcendent. The symptom of one who has even a particle of sadha is that he will commit himself. Now, I will never give up chanting Hare Krishna. I will not give up saying the name of Krishna. Even if someone cuts my body into a thousand pieces, this is the symptom. No matter what or how many obstacles come in, his, come in his path, he will continue his practice of bhakti. On the other hand, other persons have taken diksha, served their gurudev, have taken sannyas and have preached all over the world for 25 years. But then what happened? For some time they served so nicely, but then they became attracted to a woman and then they wanted to completely give up their devotion. They started eating meat and taking liquor. And the top chanting. This means they did not even have a shraddha. So this actually is shraddha. Huh? We should have at least shraddha. Huh? So there is a big difference between Loki shraddha or mandal faith and Bhagavati shraddha. Transcendent faith. shraddha means that one has committed himself. Just as the highest stage of prema in Radhika is permanent, the smallest fraction of the transcendent of Paramatma shraddha can also never fade. It has sprouted in his heart, it will continue to grow, grow and grow. So actually, at least we should have that primordial shraddha. So we, uh, we are not permitted to take, uh, take liquor and all those things. Kshatriyas uh. are permitted. Kshatriyas are permitted. Kshatriyas uh, are permitted to drink at certain occasions. So they all drink all the rank that of light liquor made of rice. As you see that actually, um, um, once they all gathered actually, they drank the liquor but from vices, members of Kshatriya's dynasty, Vrishni and Bojya. By such drinking, they became delirious and bereft of senses. So they, so much that they forgot their relationship with one another and used harsh words which touched the pores of each other's hearts. Drinking is so harmful that even such highly cultured family becomes affected by intoxication and can forget themselves in a drunken state. The descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja were not expected to forget themselves in this way, but by the will of the Supreme, it happened. And thus, they became harsh towards one another. So you see that he could destroy this Vrishni and Bhoja dynasty. It is so dangerous. But Krishna's will this happen. Um, um, so we should be very, very careful. So this is all top. Huh? And they have been divided into nine types. Ati Papa, Ati Pataka, Mahapataka, Anupataka, Upapataka, and Sankari Gana, Apatri Karana, Jati Bhamshakara, and Malaba and uh, Pratira. So all this type of is referred to Bhakti Siddha, the commentary on Shri Jaitanya Bhagavat, Madhya Khanda, in which he provides an extensive description of this classification of sins. So there is Ati Pataka, Ati Pataka, and all these things have been described. Ati Pataka. Uh, so we should. Uh, uh, actually, I think Jaitanya Shikshamrat also is a very good book for Western devotees. Uh, it um, describes uh, Ati Pataka. Um, um, in Jetar Jalitanga, the, the four miserable conditions are due to the four kinds of sinful activities known as Pataka, Guru Pataka, Maha Pataka, and Ati Pataka. Prayam there is sins. Uh, Ati Pataka. So, um, what, what are the different names of sin? So, according to its gravity and likeness, the sea is addressed in various names such as Papa, Patato, Ati Papa, Mahapata. So, it depends on gravity. 
The difference and Greg is grammatical part and all these things are uh, described in the scriptures. So basically following for regulative principle will save us from this Ati part of also describes this uh, But uh, in Satkriya Sarath, it is also this point uh, that even if Vaishnava is engaged in these sins, because the Lord is the only worshipful object and the only shelter for Vaishnava, devotee has no desire for material benefits gained by the performance of Nitya, Nemiti, Karma, Karma, Devi God, and Petru, fasting, sacrifice, vows of charity. The means of Sankalpa, Dharma, Yaga, sacrifice are already explained. Atonement, price shift, which is undergone. For the purpose of countering the reactions of the four kinds of today, Mahapata, Pata, Upapata, and Anupata is not for the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas don't have to um, undergo any atonement. Uh, in Bharatvata Panjaratra, uh, 3.22.25, the process of atonement for Vaishnava is described. Um, for a Vaishnava, the highest kind of water is full surrender to the Lord. Otherwise, one should perform activities by the Lord Vasudev. By seeing the Lord's devotee, touching his feet, serving him, feeding him with cooked grains and water, speaking sweetly, taking the dust of his feet, uh, drinking the water from his feet, eating Mahaprasad of the Lord, and chanting the names of the Lord, one can purify oneself, especially from the contamination of seeing and touching Lord devotees. We have to see the devotee of the Lord, touch his feet, serve him, feed him with cooked grains and water, speak sweetly, take the dust of his feet, drink the water from his feet, eat Mahaprasad of the Lord, and chant the names of the Lord. One can purify one's, especially from the contemporary fasting and touching the non -humans. So, this is only uh, the other atonement. So, the Daigor Pemanande. So we are stopping here now. We are on page number 187 at the beginning and we'll begin next class of Shri Mathari Kadamuni. Thank you very much for attending. Hare Krishna. End of now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, thank you, thank you. Hare Krishna, Dandavas Pram, thank you so much, uh, Maharaj. Uh, Mataji, uh, Shaka Mataji, uh, Mataji, unfortunately they're having bad networks, so that's why they could not uh, remain in the show. Uh, so that's why they asked me to give them because of the network coverage was not clear. Okay, let me do Jade Vani uh, Maharaj. Uh, Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhari Vika Giritari Radha Vino Bihari Jiki Jai Om Vishnu Parashtu Tarashata Shri Shri Marabhati Vivakanda Vishnu Deti Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Govishnu Parashto Tarashata Shri Shri Marabhati Vivakanda Dandi Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nita Lila Pravishtu Vishnu Paratva Tarashata Shri Shri Matabhati Vidanda Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nita Lila Pravishtu Paratva Tarashata Shri Shri Matabhati Vidanda Bahaman Goswami Maharaj ki jai Nethyali na pravishta ho Vishnu parashto Tarashata Shri Shri Marabha 
भक्ति विदंत स्वामी महाराज की जय मुझे तलील प्रविष्ट विष्णु पार्षोतर सता श्री श्री मर भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गो स्वामी महाराज की जय विष्णु विष्णु पार्षोतर सता श्री शील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गो स्वामी प्रभु पार की जय नेत्यलील प्रविष्ट परम भगवत प्रवर श्री शील गोर किशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज की श्री शील सचिदनंद मीनोर ठाकुर की नेत्यलील प्रविष्ट सर्वभूमा श्री शील जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जे श्री गोदंत श्री श्रील बलदेव भूषण प्रभु की जे श्रील विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर की जे श्रील नरुठा सिंहनंद प्रभु की जे श्रील कृष्ण दास कबीर राज को स्वामी प्रभु की जे श्री रूप सनातन बाथ श्री जीव गोपाल बात दास गुनाथ सत गो स्वामी प्रभु की जे श्री स्वर राय राम नंद दी श्री गौर प्रसाद विंद की जय नाम चार श्रीला हरी रास्ता की जय प्रेस गौशी कृष्णा प्रभु नीत नंद श्री अद्वैत गदाद श्रीवासि गौर बात जय चंदर दीपाय श्रीमंत दीप गोद्रुम दीप मध्या दीप को लीप ऋतु दीप जान दीप मोद्रुम दीप रोज दे पद्मकार श्री नवदी पदाम की गोपा गोपी गो गोवर्धन द्वादश वनत्मकार श्री वज मंदल की जय श्री राध कुंड श्याम कुंड तुलासी भक्ति की जय श्रीमती वृंद देव की जय श्री पूर्मास योग माय की जय श्री वर महादेव की जय श्री जगन देव सुभद्र सु दर्शन चक्र जीव की जय श्री क्षेत्र मंदिर की सर्व विघ्न विनाशकारी श्री नृसिंह देव की जय भक्त प्रभार श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की जय चार धाम की जय चार संप्रदाय की जे चार चार की जे अकर्मत राज श्री चैतन्य मात की जे श्री श्री केशव जी गौदार ओ तत्सकवास मा की जे ग्रंथ राज श्रीमत भागवत की जे श्री हरिराम संकीर्तन की जे अनंत कोति वैष्णव वृंद जय साम भक्त वृंद की जय श्री नित गौर प्रेम नद हरि हरि
Thank you so much. And tomorrow we'll see you for the Jaiva Dharma class tomorrow, same time, 8 o'clock. The same Google meeting. Thank you. Hare and Tandas.